Hey guys, Ewan here and dear god, what the hell is this? Is this the future of classic physics Mr. Olympia or what? This is basically what we were all hoping for when they originally announced the creation of this division. Somebody with huge arms, with great bicep picks, with insanely small waist, with a good vacuum. And overall just insane physique, I mean look at the muscle ballast, look at everything. The fullness, this guy is a freak, this guy is a total complete freak. Steve Lawrence, of course, 5 weeks out of Arnold Classic. Is he going to win the Classic Physique Arnold Classic this year? I believe so, I believe so. Last year he was second to George Peterson, and who was more classic here? I mean, let's not even joke about it. Last year I honestly expected Steve Lawrence to win. I know, George is more muscular and more conditioned probably, and everything from a bodybuilding standpoint, but from a classic physique standpoint, and what is the classic physique standpoint? Well, we saw it this year, actually last year, at the last Mr. Olympia, when Chris Bumstead beat Brian Ainsley, who was bigger, you know, in the back especially, and after the judge, Steve Weinberger, the head judge, said that the classic physique is all about the classical lines. But enough about that, uh, this year Steve Lorius is not gonna face George Peterson, who actually moved to 212, because that's a more suited category for him, for his physique. In this photo, Steve is not uh, in the pose, but you can see the size difference. Here, he is fully flexed, and he's standing next to Wesley Wissers, the Vintage Genetics. And right here you can see how much is Steve better than, than, than Wesley, especially through the legs and the conditioning as well. So last year, he was my favorite to win it. I expected that to happen, because he has the classic physique. This year, this year, however, he's much bigger. So compare this photo right here, of his back right here, so watch this, and look at how he looks now. Did he gain some back muscle? Yeah, yeah, his back looks much thicker, much, much wider, you know, you can see more details, more depth to it. Just overall, great back, and the shoulders looking bigger, the arms as well, as well. And everything, I mean, this guy doesn't have any fat, basically, just a little bit of water that he's going to remove uh, before uh, before the Arnold Classic, of course. And I think he wasn't um, exactly the weight cap last year, and this time around I'm sure he's gonna be. Because look at him, he's huge. Uh, eventually this guy may even switch to the open, it's possible, because he is enormous, actually, right now. He's, you know, probably within the weight cap, of course, he's going to be, at least he's going to make the weight, but he has the potential to go to the open, I'm sure about that. But if he can win the Mr. Olympia 2020, which is very possible, which is very possible, look at his physique. Does this seem um, impossible to beat Chris Bumstead? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he can beat him pretty easily. It looks like that, with those arms, with that V taper, with that small waist and everything. I don't know, it's gonna be probably a different story on the stage, we never saw these two guys collide, it's going to be interesting definitely seeing them both, but as for now, he is going to win the Arnold Classic, I'm pretty sure about that. The only man who can actually stop him, and who is going to probably be the runner-up, is Terence Ruffin. And this is his physique update, at about 5 weeks out, and he does not look more impressive than Steve Lorius, not even close. But is he a better bodybuilder than him? He's much shorter, he's much shorter. And I think he has better back, and I think he has uh, thicker legs. Uh, you know, the inner part looks just very meaty. And it looks uh, really aesthetic, as well, as well as the glutes and the hamstrings and everything. Of course, his calves, not very good, and his arms, not that great. And I don't really like his lats. But this guy, uh, he, he doesn't look that well in the offseason. He shines when he's lean. So take a look at this. It's a much different story, it's a much different story. I think this version of Terence Ruffin would probably beat Steve Lorius from the Arnold Classic 2019. The way Steve is right now, with uh, all this newly added mass, it's going to be difficult for Terence to beat him, but it's possible, it's possible. The thickness of, of Terence's chest and the legs is going to be really something, and, and the glutes and the back, it's going to be a great battle, but I think Steve is just more of a representation of classic physique, and I think judges are actually starting to award that beginning with uh, Chris Bumstead, for example. So they're looking for, you know, probably tall guys, broad shoulders, huge arms, insane wheat taper, small waist, you know, that kind of stuff. Does this guy have all of that? Yeah, yeah, he does. He does for sure. But I think Steve is just a little bit better. It's going to be probably, in the end, uh, about the conditioning. Who brings better shape? However, if both of them bring it, it's going to be close, it's going to be very close, and uh, it's impossible to say right now who is going to win it, but I have Steve as my favorite. What do you think?
Ok, next we have William Bonek with a physique update, not really a physique update, more of a body fat update or a back update. And he says, sorry to interrupt uh, your evening, uh, am I too early for this year's Christmas Eve? And he's basically talking about his Christmas tree of his lower back, the definition of his spinal erectors and uh, especially his lats. You can see his lats, his lower lats, how separated they are right here. Him being this lean at five weeks out means he's bringing insane conditioning. He's definitely doing that. It's all about the big Ramy. If big Ramy brings pretty good conditioning, he's going to beat him with a size. But if big Ramy just slips a little bit, this guy and his conditioning is going to make any bodybuilder, no matter how much bigger they are than him, look, you know, I wouldn't say smaller, but not as impressive. Not as impressive. This guy can bring the conditioning and the polish and everything. He, he is just, uh, he has his game figured out. And uh, here you can see him with his former coach, Neil Hill. Unfortunately, he dropped the coach. He's doing his preps alone right now. I think it was a mistake. I think it was a mistake. I don't think we're gonna see Bonac looking better than he was looking back when he was with Neil Hill. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. I think he's gonna still be one of the best, uh, probably the best conditioning at the Arnold Classic. Is that going to be enough to win him the Arnold Classic title? Another one? It's all about Big Grammy. It's not about William Bonac, unfortunately. Okay, next story is not exactly a happy one. We have uh, probably the best bodybuilding guru of today. If you're talking about the results, Phil Heath's trainer, Henry Rambert, also the coach of Harry Chopin, if you're talking about the open bodybuilders who are active, also the coach of Darren Buendia who won five, Mr. Olympia men's physique uh, titles, and also there is one girl in female divisions who is also a Miss Olympia. I'm not sure which division, but uh, he has another Miss Olympia. So this guy, if you're talking about the success, he is the most successful guru of today. And he had a car accident, him and his wife. So he posted this uh, photo on his Instagram account and he says, so he tags his wife and he says, Miss Naz and I were hit uh, head on by a drunk driver in our Ford Raptor during the 49ers versus Green Bay Packers game. Thank God our son Cameron wasn't in a truck. Thank God Farinaz is okay. I braced myself with my right arm on the wheel while my left hand was on the horn. The steering wheel turned on impact tearing my right rotator cuff. Thank you to Dr. Haber and his team who fit me in so quickly after the MRI results came back. The rehab won't be easy, but it could have been much worse. And he keeps on saying that you shouldn't drink and drive and so on and uh, don't drink and drive, guys. But anyways, you can see Henry Rambot had an accident. He's okay. He's alive. It could have been worse, of course. But uh, his rotator cuff is torn. He had a surgery immediately and now he needs to recover from this. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Everything is all right. As he says, uh, it could have been worse. But yeah, Henry Rambot had a car accident. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is Evans and Topani and his comeback and his chances in bodybuilding today. So there was a podcast, the Animal Pack podcast, you can search it, you can find it, and in which he basically announced his comeback. And here you can see him doing cardio, he is prepping for his comeback and for his next competitive season. Last time we saw him 2016 at the Arnold Classic Australia, and he brought really good shape. I mean, he never really failed with conditioning. He was always in pretty good condition, but he had a lot of weaknesses. I mean, he had an amazing physique, but look at the quads, look at the chest, and look at the, the midsection. His arms, forearms, shoulders, scalps, and back as well were really good, always really good. Especially in the gym with those the black and white photos, that there is a lot of them. This guy has a lot of fans, and he has a really good personality as well. He has a lot of videos up on YouTube and there is a lot of views in those videos. But basically, as far as his physique, he, he is definitely one of the top bodybuilders of 2000s, but uh, a lot of flaws in his physique as well. So can he like win the Arnold Classic uh, at one point? Sure, it's possible. Can he win the Mr. Olympia ever? No, not a chance. Not a chance. I mean, he basically reached his full potential right here. You can see it. And it's really good. It's really good. I mean, it's a good back. Arms are amazing. Shoulders are freaky. But still, there are many holes, for example, his lower body, his chest, and his midsection. Maybe he can grow his legs, but he had a quad tear, that's why he took a hiatus from bodybuilding for a couple of years. He had a horrible uh, quad tear after he fell in his backyard, basically, and uh, his midsection is probably something that cannot be fixed. 
his chest can grow, but uh, if it hasn't grown until now, it probably won't uh, now that he's 37 years old and he's coming back to bodybuilding. So he basically took uh, a couple of years off of competing and probably you know doing uh, everything to the max. But we'll see. We'll see soon enough how his physique is going to look like. If you enjoyed the video, guys, like it, please subscribe for more videos and uh, thank you so much. All the best and bye-bye.